Greetings, everyone. Welcome to ENE Learning Hub. I'm going to go through and explain the solutions for question three from the 2019 CSEC Electrical and Electronic Pass paper. So let's begin. Part A. It says, define the term apparent power. So apparent power is the combination of the reactive power and true power. It is the product of the circuit's voltage and current. Or in other words, you can say that it is the total power in a circuit that is needed for a load to operate. For example, the total power that is needed for a computer to work, that power is called the apparent power. All right, so that's it for part A. Let's move on to part B. So part one of B, it says using a simple sketch, show how the secondary windings of a center top isolation type transformer can provide a dual voltage supply. Assume the voltages to be 110 volt and 220 volt. So here I have a diagram with the secondary side of the isolation transformer topped right here in the center. Now on either side of the top, you'll be able to get 110 volt. So from line one here, from this point to where it is topped in the center, that is 110 volt. And from line two here to where it's topped in the center, you'll also get 110 volt. From line one to line two, you will get 220 volt, All right? And this is the diagram that represents the dual voltage center top isolation transformer. All right, so that's it for part one of B. Part two of B now, it says using a simple sketch, show how an auto transformer may be connected as a step up transformer. All right, so here we have a auto transformer. All right, so this is the primary side and this is the secondary side. Now, looking at the auto transformer, we can see that on the primary side, the number of turns is less, and on the secondary side, the number of turns is greater. So that tells us that this is a step up auto transformer. All right. And another thing you can look at is the voltage input versus the voltage output. So on the primary side, the voltage is 220 volt, and on the secondary side, it is 250 volt. So that is, that is also another indication that the auto transformer is a step up transformer. Next up, we have the variable output transformer. All right, so looking at this auto transformer, on the secondary side, you realize that the output voltage can be varied, all right? So if you were to move this arrow here, whether up or down, you can get a step up or step down auto transformer, all right? So with this transformer, as it says variable, you can change from one voltage to the next, you can go lower and you can go higher depending on what is required. All right, so that's it for part two of B. So let's move on to part C now. So it says a single phase step up power transformer is rated at V primary 110 VRMS and a V secondary 220 V RMS. The transformer has 100 turns on its primary side 
and a power rating of 55 volts ampere. Part one of C, it says calculate the maximum rated primary current of the transformer. All right, so let's look at what part C gives us. So from part C, we're given primary voltage, which is 110 VRMS. We were given the secondary voltage, which is 220 VRMS. Also the number of turns, which is 100, and the power rating, which is 55 volt ampere, which is the apparent power. So part one asks us to calculate the primary current. So we're going to use the apparent power to calculate the primary current. The apparent power formula is S is equal to IP multiplied by VP. So this is what we're going to use to calculate IP. But first we need to make IP the subject. So let's do that. Now, seeing that IP is being multiplied by VP, in order to make IP the subject, we have to get rid of VP. To do that, we have to divide VP by itself. Whatever we do for one side, we have to do it for the other side. All right, so on this side, VP cancel, VP, and what we're left with is IP equal to apparent power divided by the primary voltage. And that is 55 volt ampere divided by 100 volt RMS, that will give us 0 0.5 amp. And that is the primary current. All right, so that's it for part one of C. So let's move on to part two now. It says, if the transformer is now connected to a 110 volt RMS source, as a single phase step down transformer, calculate the new maximum rated secondary current. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is to determine the number of turns. All right, so the number of turns is equal to Vs divided by Vp, and that is 220 volt divided by 110 volt, and we get two turns. Right, so it means that on the secondary side of the transformer, for every turn on the primary, you'll have a two turns on the secondary. So that's what it means. So therefore, it means that the secondary current is two times the primary current. So as a result of that, the secondary current IS is equal to two times IP, which is two times 0 0.5, that will give us one amp. And that's it for part two of C. All right, so let's move on to part D. So it says, at a given frequency, a series AC circuit has an inductive reactance XL of 40 ohm, a capacitive reactance XC of 80 ohm and a resistance of 30 ohm. Calculate the total impedance of the circuit. Now, before we can calculate the total impedance, the first thing that we have to do is to determine which of the reactants is greater. So looking at what is given, we can see that the capacitive reactance is greater than the inductive reactance. So seeing that the capacitive reactance is greater than the inductive reactance, then we can now go ahead and calculate the total impedance where Z is equal to square root of R square plus what's in the bracket, XC minus XL squared. Now, if it was a case where XL was greater than XC, then it would have been XL minus XC, all right? But seeing that we're working with XC greater than XL, it will be XC minus XL. 
right? So this will equal to the square root of 30 squared plus what's in the bracket, 80 minus 40 squared. That will give us a square root of 900 plus 40 squared equal to square root of 900 plus 1,600 equal to the square root of 2,500, and that will give us 50 ohm. All right, so 50 ohm here is the total impedance for the circuit. So that's it for part one of D. Part two of D now, it says the magnitude of the phase angle of the circuit. All right, so what they're asking for is the angle, the phase angle. All right, so again, we have to apply the same principle where we have to determine which reactance is greater and we already know that Xc is greater. So seeing that Xc is greater, then tan theta is equal to Xc minus Xl. As I said before, if Xl was greater, then it would have been Xl minus Xc. But in this case, Xc is greater, so it is Xc minus Xl divided by R. That will give us 80 ohm minus 40 ohm divided by 30 ohm. That is 40 ohm divided by 30 ohm, and that will give us 1.333. Now, to get the angle, it will be theta equal to tan inverse 1.333. That will give us 53 degree. All right, and that's it for part 2 of D, and that's it for this question.